Let's look at the sampling distribution of the difference in sample means. Why do we care about the sampling distribution of the difference in sample means? The main reason is that the difference in sample means is the usual estimator of the difference in population means. And to construct the appropriate inference procedures for the difference in population means, we need to know the characteristics of the sampling distribution of its estimator, the difference in sample means. Let x1 bar represent the mean of n1 independent observations from a normally distributed population with mean mu1 and variance sigma1 squared, and similarly for x2 bar. And we are also going to let here x1 bar and x2 bar be independent, which would be the case if we are sampling independently from the two different populations. In our previous discussion about the sampling distribution of the sample mean, we learned that the sample mean has a mean that's equal to the mean of the population from which we are sampling, and a variance that is equal to the variance of the population from which we are sampling, divided by the sample size. The sampling distribution of the sample mean will be normal, regardless of the sample size, if we are sampling from a normally distributed population. And if we are sampling from a distribution that is not normal, then the sampling distribution will be approximately normal, provided we have a large sample size. This is what the central limit theorem told us. Our point of interest in this video is investigating the sampling distribution of the difference in sample means, x1 bar minus x2 bar. What can we say about the sampling distribution of that difference? What is the mean of the sampling distribution of x1 bar minus x2 bar? Well, if we want the mean or expectation of x1 bar minus x2 bar, if we recall some properties of expectation we discussed previously, this is simply equal to the expectation of x1 bar minus the expectation of x2 bar. We can split those up. The expectation of x1 bar is simply the mean of the population from which we are sampling. In other words, mu1. And similarly for mu2. So on average, x1 bar minus x2 bar is equal to the difference in the population means. In other words, the difference in the sample means is an unbiased estimator of the difference in the population means. What is the variance of the sampling distribution of the difference in sample means? If we want the variance of x1 bar minus x2 bar, we need to recall that if two random variables are independent, the variance of their difference is equal to the sum of their variances. And so if we have independent samples here, this is going to be equal to the variance of x1 bar plus the variance of x2 bar. And this is going to be sigma1 squared over n1 plus sigma2 squared over n2. Why plus instead of minus? The short, overly simplified version is that the variance is a squared quantity, and that minus 1 would get squared away. And one thing to note again, that this is going to be the variance if we have two independent samples. If the samples are dependent, it gets a little bit more complicated. Overall, what is the sampling distribution of the difference in sample means? Under the conditions laid out earlier, it's going to be this. The difference in sample means is going to have a mean equal to the difference in population means and a variance equal to the sum of the variances of x1 bar and x2 bar. The difference x1 bar minus x2 bar will be normally distributed regardless of the sample size if we are sampling from normally distributed populations. And if we are sampling from distributions that are not normal, then the central limit theorem tells us that this distribution will be approximately normal, provided we have large sample sizes. Let's look at how we might use this in probability calculations. Suppose that for Canadians between 20 and 39 years of age, male heights are approximately normally distributed with a mean of 177.7 cm and a standard deviation of 5.6 cm. And in my notation, we're saying that that's approximately normal with a mean of 177.7 and a variance that's equal to 5.6 squared, 
the square of the standard deviation. And similarly for females, their heights are approximately normal with a mean of 163.0 centimeters and a variance of 5.1 squared. In reality, we don't know the exact mean and standard deviation for these two distributions. But these values are approximately correct and we're going to assume them to be true for the following probability calculations. If 20 males and 15 females in this age group are randomly selected, what is the sampling distribution of the difference in sample means? Well, the sample mean of the heights for males will have a mean that's equal to the population from which we are sampling and a variance that's equal to the variance of the population from which we are sampling divided by the sample size and similarly for females. And since we are sampling from distributions that are approximately normal, the distributions of the sample means will be approximately normal as well. Now if we want the sampling distribution of the difference in sample means here, that's going to be approximately normal, and it's going to have a mean that's equal to the difference in these population means. And it's going to have a variance that's equal to the sum of these two variances. If we carry out those calculations, we would see that x bar m minus x bar f is approximately normally distributed with a mean of 14.7 and a variance of 3.302. Suppose we have the same scenario that we just laid out, except now we want to know the probability the average height of the males is at least 10 centimeters greater than the average height of the females. And here's the sampling distribution of the difference in sample means that we just worked out. And what we want to know is the probability that the sample mean for the males, x bar m, is at least 10 centimeters greater than the sample mean for the females. And so I'm going to write that as x bar f plus 10. This is the probability that we want to find. What I'm going to do here is subtract x bar f on both sides and say that this is equal to the probability that x bar m minus x bar f is bigger than or equal to 10. I did that. I got x bar m and x bar f together like this because I know the sampling distribution of that quantity. And now I can standardize that and get our probability based on the normal distribution in the usual ways. I've gone to another slide to give us a little more room. Here we're going to standardize this quantity in the usual ways by subtracting the mean and dividing by the standard deviation. And so this is going to be equal to the probability that x bar m minus x bar f minus the mean of the sampling distribution of 14.7 and divided by the standard deviation of the sampling distribution, which is the square root of the variance, so here we're going to divide by the square root of the variance of 3.302, and we're going to do the same thing on the other side. 10 minus 14.7 divided by the square root of 3.302. What did we achieve here? Well, this left side is now a random variable that has the standard normal distribution. And so this is simply going to be equal to the probability that z, where z is a random variable that has a standard normal distribution, is greater than or equal to minus 2.586, if we carry out this calculation. And we find this probability in the usual ways, by going to the standard normal distribution, either using software or a standard normal table. Minus 2.586 is out here in the left tail, minus 2.586. We want the probability that z is greater than that value, and so that is the area to the right of that value under the standard normal curve. If we go to software or, or a standard normal table, we can find that that area is approximately 0.995. And so that is the answer to our probability question. The probability that the sample mean height of the 20 males 
is at least 10 centimeters greater than the sample mean height of the 15 females is approximately 0.995.